It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, everybody. It's Sunday, September 19th, and it's time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What you know, Fruit Loop? Anything good? Oh, today's kind of heavy. It's a heavy Very day. Heavy. Yeah. Heavy, heavy day. Just not the news we wanted to hear. We've been following this all day, all evening, all week, just hoping for some sort of a miracle. But uh, we found out today that they found Gabby's body. So we're going to get into all that here in just a second. First, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. You can look behind me there and see a couple of the uh, pillows that she's made out of T-shirts for us. She does quilts, um, all kinds of stuff. So go check her out. It's uh, twocoolt-shirtquilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis. And we just want to say a thank you to Tammy and Maggie both for your PayPal donations. They help us to keep doing this. So thank you very much. Thanks. So let's get right in. You know, I was thinking today after the announcement, and this is the second case that we followed from the announcement to finding the person. And for me, I don't know about you, but it, it hits different. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's very, it's always heavy when we cover any kind of a, a murder case, but I think you get so invested and you follow every news update and you have that hope that it's not going to be what we think it's going to be. And then we did that way with JJ and Tylee. And then today just, I felt that, you know, just, I, I cried. Yeah. You, you flip kind of flip back and forth with are they alive? Are they deceased? Are they alive? Are they deceased? You take in all this evidence and you just, you guess back and forth and you flip flop. Yeah. Uh, and we did the same thing with Tylee and JJ. You give 9 million reasons why they're still alive and then 9 million why they're not. Um, and you always hope and pray that they're going to find them and they're okay. Yeah. And I just, her family, I feel so bad for them. <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> her dad tweeted a picture shortly after the announcement by the FBI of a, a beautiful picture of Gabby standing in front of some painted angel wings. And she, she just looks so cute. And it said, um, she touched the world and it had a, a broken heart emoji. And, you know, I was thinking about my kids because just today, this afternoon, I decided to step away for a few hours and take my youngest daughter downtown and just, just to enjoy some time with her. It's been very busy. And so I haven't got to spend as much time with, with my kids this week as I wanted to, even though we're in the same house, you know how it goes. And I'm walking around with her and we're having a great time and I, I, I'm watching her. And I just think as a mother, it scares me to death to think that somebody might come in her life one day that doesn't love her the way I do. Yeah, that might want to hurt her or make her feel bad or make her feel unloved or make her feel like everything's her fault. And that just broke my heart. I have a 16 year old daughter. I have a 14 year old son. And this doesn't discriminate between genders. I, I hope that my son never is with somebody that does him that way. Um, you know, I the first time I watched the body cam footage, I was making notes for this podcast. 
And I went back and watched it twice this week and it broke my heart because you see a girl who clearly had been gaslighted into thinking it's my fault. It's me. I'm OCD. I'm this, I'm that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and then you just, your mind goes to these kind of things don't happen once. No. What was going on back then, you know, behind closed doors because they had this van life channel where, you know, you always put the best of yourself online. And it's just so sad to think that as happy as she was in the videos that we got to see that behind closed doors, clearly this poor girl was struggling. Yeah. And there was some interviews that came out of uh, one of her friends in Florida, right? Yeah. Where, um, she said that she stayed with her uh, for a, for a bit because of arguing or whatever with him. Mm -hmm. And she kind of gave a little bit of background into what he was like. And yeah, it's scary. Yeah. It's, um, I, I just, man, you just hope that women, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's really hit hard. you you know, because you, you learn everything you can about this person. And so by the end of these cases, in a weird way, you feel like, you know, them, you feel like you've known this person and you feel like, you know, their family and you see them on TV, you see their pleas and you relate to that. And I, it's just so sad. She really looked to be somebody who loved life and just was having a blast in spite of what was probably some nasty stuff going on in that van. Yeah. And it's just, and so I've sad. had people in my life and I mean, I have people that I know now that I'm close with uh, friends and all that have been in these same situations. Hasn't ended this badly with someone losing their life but I've been in abusive situations and different things like that. And yeah, mentally, yeah. physically, I mean, I coach sports and a lot, some of our girls in high school were going through stuff like this. Yeah. I've had this talk many times with my girls and uh, with my son, because they're, my teenagers are getting to that age where they're going to start dating. And it just scares me because I will catch a charge. If I ever find out somebody is gaslighting my kid or it's just really, really sad. I think a lot of it is just th these abusers convince their victims, everything's your fault. You take the blame. You did this. You did that. And they believe it. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's a hard cycle to break because yeah. you have kind of the buildup period where the problems are coming and then you have the explosion where it all hits the fan. And usually you have this honeymoon phase where the abuser is overly nice. They're kind of packing on the love so that the next time this cycle happens, they remember that honeymoon phase and it's very toxic, but it's yeah. intoxicating too. And it's a hard cycle to break. Yeah. I, I firmly believe uh, the uh, interview or not interview, but the statement when they were, um, I just lost my train of thought, uh, when they had the domestic call. Yeah. Some of that stuff, when you look back at it, him s saying he was going to leave her yeah. and her trying to get back in the van, mm -hmm. for me, that's conditioning. Oh, yeah. That's happened more than once. Oh, for sure. Because if you remember, they said that her backpack was hung on the back of that van yeah. And I think that's a visual to her where he doesn't have to say anything except, do you see that? It's yeah. outside this van like you're going to be. Yeah. And so bless yeah. her heart, she just wanted to go out and make a living doing really fun stuff. And unfortunately, it looks like she has chosen the the wrong man to do it. I We'll get into all that in a bit. The other thing that was really beautiful, did you see this tweet? I did see it. I went back and looked. Uh, so Valerie Castro tweeted a pic saying, do you believe in signs? And there was a rainbow that appeared a short while ago over the area where Gabby Petito was found. Uh, the pic showed a rainbow coming straight down from the sky, touching the ground in the distance. Yeah, I, I, I do believe in signs because I think that kind of stuff helps us um, when we lose somebody we love to, even if it's a fluke, for me, if I see a butterfly, I think of my grandpa and I see them at the most random times and often when I most need to see one, you know what I mean? So yeah. I do believe in signs. So let's get into the FBI. They will kind of work backwards. 
but the FBI spokesman, he was very emotional. Some of the authorities in the background were, were emotional as well. He was choking up and couldn't talk. And I think a lot of times these, these investigators, they get to know the family. They feel like we do where you feel like, you know, the victim. And so when you can't give them a positive outcome, it's personal. And then yeah. they, they hurt for the family. They have to, they're the ones that have to go tell them we found your daughter. Yeah. And they, they do. We've, we saw it uh, with Kay and Larry and, and the family and all there. They get close. They, they do. talk to them. They talk to them basically every day, giving them an update of what's going on. Right. And like you just said, their number one goal is to find them alive. Yep. So, um, um so Anyways, at first he offers his, I mean, he opened up and said it. We offer our sincere condolences to Gabby's family. And so yesterday they started searching at this Spread Creek dispersed camping area. And I thought it was a little odd, you know, that they were there. It's very specific. It's not somewhere that you would think they would just say, well, let's go search here. We know that on some of her apps, she had tagged this location and um he said that human remains were discovered they were consistent with the description of he called her gabrielle gabby petito a full forensic investigation had not confirmed 100 percent yet that they had found gabby but the family had been notified of this they're gonna do her autopsy on tuesday that that was just put out right before we went on and of course a cause of death has not been determined at this time and they're going to keep the vicinity around the Spread Creek closed until further notice because the investigation is still ongoing and they're still going to be out there. So they need some help from the public. What did they say? So they're asking anyone who was in the Spread Creek dispersed camping area from August 27th to August 30th. They're asking uh, if you had contact with Gabby or Brian or if you saw the van to contact the FBI at tips tips dot fbi dot gov or 1-800 call fbi and the denver field office direct number is 303-629-7171 you can upload photos to fbi.gov backslash petito uh so you can help out in any way there yeah so where they were looking was very rugged they said <clears throat> so like we said yesterday they started searching this area and and then i wake up today and i see a family on youtube their channel is red white and bethune and these people are precious they spotted the van in video on august 27th and their backstory is just devastating they lost their son ethan in 2011 in a car accident on their way to disney for his seventh birthday so every September they do something called pay it forward for Ethan and they do a random act of kindness every day and encourage people to do the same. And I just, that gave me chills when I heard it because this family confirmed the area to look through yeah. this video. It came out overnight. So they were searching there yesterday. Remember it got late. They called it off. And then boom, just out of the blue, this video comes out and her body was found relatively close to where they were in that van, where the yeah. van was spotted. They also started a GoFundMe for Mental Health America. We'll link that because I, the mom was so bubbly and the dad was just, you could tell they're a unit. And I know a lot of times when you lose a child, sometimes that can devastate marriages because people don't know how to handle their grief. I don't know how I would handle my grief. I, 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 I don't think I could exist without any of my kids on this earth, but they're really, really cute. And again, we see where there's a lot of times where social media can hinder investigations. Yesterday, there were so many false reports going around. It was out of hand, but then you see this one little gem right here that quite possibly helped find her today yeah so it's just amazing to see um you know the people online truly do care yeah i'm gonna tell you there was i know at the in that video uh they said you could see flip-flops on the back yeah i saw it yeah i can tell you when we go and we'll talk about it a little bit uh i do a hiking ministry when we go hiking and stuff 
none of us leave anything outside the vehicle. Yeah. We always, if you, when we take our normal shoes off or our flip flops off or whatever and put on our hiking stuff, our shoes, I always put my stuff inside my vehicle because I don't want it to go missing. Um, yeah. So that was weird to me that it was just left outside. And it was one. I didn't see two. But yeah, yeah so we're going to switch over to Brian. And we just want to say when we put out the graphic that said Brian is missing, we literally were just trying to get something out. We sort of echoed what was being said on TV. And we totally meant no disrespect. We understand Brian is on the run. Yeah. Like the big yeah. coward he is. Yeah. So they, the, they have blocked off in front of Brian's parents' house tonight. And I said, I hope the cops are going there to check the attics in the crawl space. I yeah. don't know if I believe his parents' version of events. Do, do we know anybody else that's backed up what they've said? No. And here's the thing. I, I don't even know. I want to know who saw him in Florida besides his parents. Yeah. I mean, we know the van was there. Yeah. We know he, on September 1st, went back there. Right. But, but it's, it's, we've 18 days since then. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, his car was found, I believe at this, um, what's it called? Carlton reserve. The parents said that he, on Tuesday, he said he was going hiking here and he left with a backpack and they didn't hear from him. So there was, let's see. There is a Brian Enton of News Nation now. He's been out, outside the house for days. And he did the math and said the Mustang was gone on Tuesday. And he saw it in the driveway on Wednesday. Okay, my question is, why didn't the parents call? Why did they wait till Friday to call? They, I don't know what they know. But I know that they have enabled him to not talk to authorities. So I hope to goodness mom and dad are going to start getting grilled real hard, real soon. Yeah. Well, we know he drove the Mustang to where he was going hiking. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a weird situation. It's really weird, but let's back up to Friday night. So the cops were called to Brian's house or his parents' house at Brian, pa Brian's parents request. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's not talk about Gabby, who he went on a months long road trip with and didn't come home with her. Let's not help about that. But our baby boy hasn't been seen. Let's call the FBI. Um, I read a I read a good comment and it's it said, uh, and I don't know who said it. I don't I don't I don't know any of that. But it said uh, it was it was referencing you haven't helped Gabby and her family at all during this whole process, but now you're calling on the police to help you. Exactly. Uh, mm. I thought that was a good point. It is a good point because we don't know what Brian told them in the time he was with them, but the fact that they prevented authorities from having access to Brian at 22 years old, you're enabling a murderer. Yeah. I mean, if that were my kid, and he went on a three month long road trip with his girlfriend and came home without her. Uh, number one, you're not sleeping in my house until I find out where she is and she's safe or let's go down to the police station. Yeah. You know, I love my kids, but you wonder, go is, ahead. This, is this a case where the parents are afraid of the kid? I mean, he's not a kid, but I don't think so. You know, know. he's been gone since Tuesday. If he's, if he's missing, then you go to the authorities Tuesday night when he's not back home. I, I think these people are sorry, the way they've acted. I try not to judge people that I don't know too harshly, but I don't have anything good to say about these people that, I, and, I, the, and their attorney has put out the most cold statement since all this. I just can't understand. So here's, so he goes Tuesday to hike this area the car ends up back at the house on Wednesday, mm -hmm. but you don't call the police till Friday. Right. If he was going to spend the night longer, if you knew he was going to camp, which he didn't have a tent. He had a backpack. 
that was it. Yeah, he had a backpack. So he, I mean, it didn't sound like he had a tent or anything. Um, I know he talked about in some of those videos, he had a hammock and he slept in a hammock, which a hammock is easy to put in a backpack and throw it in and go. But it doesn't make sense for me. Why would you go back and get the car on Wednesday if he told you he was going to be there more than one night? Yeah. Does that you see what I'm you see where I'm going with this? I do. So why would you go back and get the car on Wednesday and then not report till Friday? Right. Because he would have no ride home. Here's my thing. Uh, this is my opinion. I'll eat my shoe if I'm wrong. I think he got a four day head start on authorities. I don't think he's in that reserve. I mean, think about it. There are bear what alligators. There's all kinds of stuff in there. I mean, there's snakes. It's muddy it's swampy they've had rain what are the chances i mean you hike way more than me what are the chances that he would successfully thrive out there with ever with the elements in a backpack i'm gonna tell you when i go hiking i'm an overpacker right one, yeah. i don't want to starve i always <laughs> prepare i prepare to get stuck in the woods when i go hiking yeah. i prepare for an emergency getting stuck in the woods and I take ample supplies. Mm -hmm. It didn't uh, uh, just a little backpack. It didn't sound like he had much in it. If, if that's what even happened. Right. Because we don't know. I bet you a hundred bucks. The FBI authorities are looking at any kind of surveillance in that area, any kind of cameras on the premises. I bet they are checking like flight logs, seeing if he has flown out of here anything they're going to be looking at credit card statements bank statements phone pings now here's what's interesting and i actually verified this myself there is an app and i can't think of it off the top of my head it's trail something i think and i added gabby on there because i had seen this online and i wouldn't put it out here unless i saw it with my own two eyes but it showed the last pinged location of that app in puerto rico Wow. I think I think he got a four day head start, and he ain't nowhere near where the alligators are. As big I, as this case is, putting his face everywhere. Oh yeah, he better I mean, hope, hope he's he hiding out. out of, he needs to. I just want them to find him. I want to see them drag him out and give us his mug shot and stick him in a jail cell, and yeah. let's find out what happened. Yeah, and I want him held accountable for what he did. Exactly. He took a young innocent life. Yeah. The family deserves justice and deserves to see him put away behind bars. Uh, I hope they find him before he harms himself or, or whatever. Yeah. But here's my deal. Here's my deal. It, I haven't seen anything that said if you see him, he's he could be armed and dangerous. Well, that might change now that they found her body because I think that automatically bumps him into the suspect category. So they were a little hesitant the other night at the news conference. I noticed to somebody asked, is he armed? Does he have a gun? And it was kind of stumbled upon to where normally you would say, well, we don't know. So yeah. I'm curious, does the family have any guns missing from the home and that kind of thing? But I think now we got a manhunt. We got to find yeah. somebody who is armed and dangerous and likely murdered his girlfriend. Yeah. Now I did look at the overhead of that. Uh, reserve area where he supposedly uh, went Tuesday and it is heavy covered. Oh yeah. Uh, it's heavy covered with trees. So a, a drone getting in there and seeing stuff would be tough. Right. Uh, in the areas that I saw. Well, I um, read that. It, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but it would be difficult um, with the elements. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still been hot here. Yeah. So with the heat, you not having ample water. I mean, you could take things to, to purify water. Um, but yeah, I, they've I, had I, some rain. It's yeah. been really rainy. It looks like it's going to rain a lot of the week, but then you're looking at mosquitoes, bugs, snakes, everything. Yeah. Um, I'd have my hammock in the top of the tree, but you know, I, I just don't feel like that's where he is. I think that somebody somewhere has helped him get far away from Sarasota. That's just my gut. Um, now back to the house on Friday, we kind of thought maybe they were going to go in and arrest him. And so I texted you and said, Hey, the cops are at Brian's house. We were watching all night. They brought in, they went out and looked in the Mustang and it didn't look like they were searching it. They were looking for something. They get whatever they're looking for, go back in the house. 
And then they bring in brown evidence bags. And I'm like, oh, search warrant. Here we go. They've got something. And then it's tweeted out by a local um, reporter that Brian's parents made the call. Brian is not speaking to authorities. A little while later, Brian is not in the home. And I thought, I kind of thought, is he missing? Has he ran? Not missing because he's not missing. Gabby was missing. He has run. He has taken off. You know, it's yeah. the most cowardly thing you can do. I mean, if, oh gosh, I just, mm. yeah. Cause I think the bags, that whole thing that night was strictly because he wasn't there. Exactly. They, they were worried about their boy. So what, what was put in the bags was some of his clothing so the dogs could get a scent. Yep. Uh, now so. I wonder, can they get DNA off that stuff? Now, you know, they can go like in your trash and get your cigarette butts or your, Coke or whatever you you know drink. I, yeah, I'm that sure happens that. all the time. They drink water at the police station and get their DNA or fingerprints. There you go. Um, yeah. I just think that this is still going to be a very. Uh, it's just going to be an intense case until they catch him. Yeah, I don't want to say till he's found because he needs to be caught, not found. But yeah. then you have the other side is if he kind of thought this may come crashing down soon and he did hurt himself or kill himself, we that's not what we want because, number one, we want him to pay here on earth for what he did. And also, we want to know what happened. Mm -hmm. And we may yeah. never know what happened. He doesn't have to say, it's, but you always want that suspect to be brought in alive. Yeah. Now we don't know him. Is he the type of person? I mean, people do desperate things when they know that the clock's ticking and the walls are coming down. But you think we pretty much assume sometime between August 27th and August 30th is when she was murdered. Yeah. He's had over two weeks to know what he did in his brain to see it. And then to anticipate what's coming now, which is, I mean, essentially a mob on their front lawn yeah. yeah um with people just very understandably upset that a member of their community a family is not helping find a 22 year old young woman that your son was last seen with yeah so i i don't think we've uh scratched the surface on the search for runaway brian yeah it's very eerie looking at that video where that van was because you don't is. know I had a, yeah. what was going on when those people ride right by that van yeah because they said they were from florida the plates were from florida they i think they said they stopped because they were going to speak or say hello because you don't see many tags with the same state right they said they wanted to but they just didn't see anybody so they kept going yeah. but man when you yeah. when when that pans past where you can see in the windows and you see his hat up on the dash yeah that that was when i said whoa that is yeah. the van and this is kind of where they were searching yesterday so then yeah. i thought i told you earlier i think something's gonna hit i think they're on to something maybe we know they had limited access to some stuff from their phones i don't think they've got the full data dump in from what i've read but i kind of wondered did that phone lead them to the area and then that youtube video just drove it home yeah but regardless it the only positive in this is that the family don't have to guess yeah you know i think not knowing would just be gut-wrenching yeah and they seem like amazing people and and our thoughts and prayers go out to them and anybody who knew and loved gabby yeah. it's uh too young yep yeah. that was my fear that he's took his own life and isn't going to tell, you know, able to tell right. anything and then yeah. they're going to not have any closure. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. It, you know, I'm, I'm glad the cards fell where they did given the situation that she was deceased and, and at least now they, they're going to have her and they can yeah. uh, honor her and give her whatever they need to give to, to close that. And I just, as a mom, I just can't, uh, fathom it i don't want you know and she has really good step parents too it seems they're all very active and and yeah. have been active in in looking for her and, and getting awareness out so it sounded like gabby was really surrounded with with a lot of love and unfortunately just 
fell victim to somebody who had really bad intentions. Yep. Yep. So anyways, I think that's kind of all we were going to do tonight. Um, we really didn't want to talk about anything else. This one really just kind of hit us right in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. I got a heavy feeling, heavy feeling, but we're going to send lots of love and light to uh, Gabby's family and friends and, and just whatever we can do to help seek justice, to keep the facts out there. We really try hard not to put anything out there to speculation. It just creates chaos. Yeah. And um, to our new listeners, we know we have a lot of new listeners. We appreciate you guys. We really do try to keep it fact driven and try to keep it to where you can listen with your kids in the car. <laughs> yep. Cause my grandma would spank me if I didn't. And, and thanks right. to my mom, my mother was really invested in this case and she was sending me a lot of links when I was doing other things like mopping my floors because they were just at that point. And, uh, so yeah, thanks mom. She really, That's was right. we, we do this and our friends and our family that we're around, they get invested in the case too. Cause yeah, they always yeah. ask us, Oh, what case mm -hmm. are you doing? What's going on? So I know today I had your oldest with me mm -hmm. and we were up, uh, friends and all were, were up, uh, just hanging out and taking a day. And when it came across, cause we watched the press conference, yeah. we all just kind of took a deep breath in and just, yeah. um, cause you, yeah. you get attached and you, you yeah. hope in, in our families and friends and all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the thing too is, you know, it drives home that ultimately nobody's safe. And that's scary. Mm. Whether you're in the wrong place at the wrong time or whether you're with somebody you know and you love and you think loves you, we're, you know, it's, it's just a scary world. And yeah. I, I just, all you can do is wake up every day and just hope and pray that you're not a statistic. And I think a lot of things have got to change. We've got to learn how to spot nonverbal mental health crisis things. I think we just all need an education so that when somebody like Gabby is around us, we can hopefully see without seeing. Because here's the thing. People get so conditioned that even when you're surrounded by cops, oftentimes victims don't say anything, even though they are safe in that moment because they're conditioned to not say anything to defend the abuser. Yeah. And it's, they're not going to believe you. They'll believe you. They'll believe me over you. And then, you know, um, when that, when they're gone, it's probably going to be worse than if you yeah. had just kept your mouth shut. So I think stories like Gabby's and we've seen them in the past, we really have to start paying attention to people we know and, and look for signs and, speak up and be that person that says, Hey, you know, I'm kind of getting a vibe. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, it, it really is. Know. It's, and I've been in that situation where I didn't recognize it. And then later on when I was told what was going on and what was happening, I felt bad. Right. Because I thought I should have seen this. I should have mm -hmm. helped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I yeah. mean, we all can't go be a psychiatrist, but you know, there are resources on the internet that, that you can read that help you identify if you suspect somebody in your life is being abused by a partner, you can go online and they give you so many things to look for. And it makes a lot of sense. And it's not necessarily things that are glaring like a black eye. So yeah. I think all of us, we need to educate ourselves and take care of our people. And I'm not saying nobody, that wasn't the case with Gabby. They were on the road. They were isolated. And when Gabby called her mom or whatever, I'm sure for the most part, she was happy. Yeah. You know, so just as a rule of thumb in a general sense, you know, learn the signs. And if you see something, speak up. It could be life or death. Yep. yep. All right, guys. Well, we're going to end this now. We will be back whenever there's some big news in this case. I think uh, tomorrow I'm going to keep up with things with the manhunt for Brian. And hopefully they'll find him. I just, I'm going to be yeah. so happy if they find that guy. Yep. yep All I right. Agree. We appreciate you guys. You can follow us on social media. We're very active in keeping these cases updated and we will see you soon. Okay. Round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry. Ooh, a book club. 
Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.